Folks, good evening and a very warm welcome to you to this welcome service to welcome the Reverend Tim Day as your vicar. My name is Andrew Race, I am the earlier Dean to Akeley East and I've had some role in the shaping of this service with Mark and Ian who are your church wardens here. Everything should be on your printed order of service and am I right in thinking that the hymns will be up on the screens yep. as well? So do follow through. You will be aware that we should have uh, welcomed him some weeks ago, but Her Late Majesty the Queen uh, took over proceedings and died. And uh, so we had to do as a nation what we all did so well. Tim was licensed by the bishop, so he is legal and regular, but this is our <laughs> Can I say that again? <laughs> so this is our opportunity as the people of faith in this place to welcome him. If you need to use a facility at all that is through the door to my right and on the right, do make sure you lock the door when you go in. And just to remind you, at the end of the service, whether you leave via that door or that door, there is a collection plate. If you've not got hard cash on you, your iPhone or your credit card, <laughs> tap it on the electronic devices. And all the collections tonight are going towards the work and ministry of the community of the Tree of Life, which is a wonderful facility that connects with our younger people across the diocese as they explore their vocation and ministry in the service of God and his church. So without further ado, I shall go and join uh, the uh, procession behind me, and all of you, if you are able, would you please stand as we sing, In Christ Alone. Thank you.
grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Tim, welcome. Andrea, welcome. Andrew, Laura, Hannah, Hayden, Naomi and James, they're not here, they are somewhere far away, but nevertheless they are thinking of us this evening as we have come to celebrate. By the way, this is very unique because uh, Tim's already done, if you like. <laughs> uh, a couple of months ago, we kind of, uh, uh, in fact, Tim was one of the first people in the diocese to swear to King Charles III. Isn't he cool? <laughs> It's 21st of September at the Bishop Scott. So there you go, you've done. Um, but what uh, I discovered this weekend is that uh, Tim supports Manchester City. <laughs> <laughs> is that acceptable? <laughs> This, this congregation are, are already making a lot of noise there, there they go. There we go. Listen, let's pray, because today is about all of us as a way, as we enter God's presence, this new chapter in our, in our lives together, where God is fully present. Let's pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified. Hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people in their vocation and ministry. They may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Unity and diversity in the body. 
Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honourable, we treat with special honour. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honour to, honor to the parts that lacked it so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honoured, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. This is the word of the Lord. This reading is taken from Matthew 28, verses 15, sorry, 16 to 20, entitled The Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely, I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. <laughs> oh God, you have made us to yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find its rest in you. So I pray tonight, what we sing and what we pray and what we say and what we celebrate, may it be edifying. And for some of us, may it be restful and life-changing. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
The great thing about the old stories is that there's always someone in the congregation who haven't heard the story. So I'm going to tell you an old story you might have heard before. It's a story of a man with bulging muscles. Some of you might say it just like our new vicar Tim. <laughs> a man with bulging muscles, unlike Tim, lost his job. <laughs> so he turned up and found this advert in the newspaper which said, wanted man to work in the zoo. And uh, he turned up thinking he had to be an administrator or something, only to find the part that was going was to play the part of a monkey. He had to come at the dawn, he had to get into the suit of a monkey, he had to impersonate a monkey, he had to jump between one cage to another, there were lots of children coming the following day, uh, and he had to eat the peanuts and the bananas that were given to him. I find that you can only eat so much peanuts and bananas, after that they get better of you. Anyway, he was going from one cage to another, he fell into the lion's den next door. And the lion said, uh, no, he said, help, help, and which the lion said, if you don't shut up, we'll both lose our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Who are we? What is it behind uh, all our suits? We are all human beings, and this evening, at the very least, I want you to consider who Jesus is because in the passage that was read for us, it is towards the end of the Gospel of Matthew. This was Jesus' last command in some ways. And I pray that this will become our first concern. At the heart of what the Great Commission is, is about trusting in the person, in the power, and in the presence of Jesus. Christ invites us to, him, to make disciples of all nations, and his last command ought to be our first concern. So I plead with you, my dear sisters and brothers, may the Great Commission not be our great omission. That is one of our biggest problem. We have omitted Jesus' last command. This is about trusting in the person, in the power, and in the presence of Jesus Christ to make disciples of all nations. So, thinking of the person, what images come to your mind when you think of Jesus? Do you think of him as a simple, humble, holy man? Or do you think of him as a daunting, powerful presence who speaks with authority? Encyclopedia Britannica uses 20,000 words to describe him. And that takes more space than given to Buddha, to Confucius, to Muhammad, to Alexander the Great. Some of the greatest and finest minds in history made a choice to follow Jesus Christ. Blaise Pascal, many say, is one of the great philosophers of all times. He was a follower of this Nazarene. Isaac Newton followed Jesus. Michael Faraday said, I bow down before him, the Lord of all. Napoleon Bonaparte, he spent the last six years of his life in a prison. And from that prison, he wrote this. He said, I know men, and I tell you, Jesus is not a man. Everything in him amazes me. Comparison is impossible between him and any other human being in the world. I challenge you, said Napoleon. I challenge you to find another man like Jesus. Leo Tolstoy spent uh, much of his life in a sense of bewilderment. This genius of a man. He, towards the end of his life, he said, I have lived most of my life. I have lived most of my life with nihilism as the undergirding reality. I came to know Jesus five years ago, and my life went through a sudden change. Life and death ceased to be evil, he said, instead of despair. Instead of despair, I tasted joy, which nothing, no revolution could have taken away. From James Cohn to Mother Teresa, from Mother Kim, Esther Kim of Korea, Everyone found in this man, Jesus Christ, the heart and soul and the purpose of their lives. Who is this Jesus? 
this person we ought to consider. The great African American preacher once actually preached and asked what is prayer. He thought of Jesus and he said he is enduringly strong. He is entirely sincere. He is eternally steadfast. He is immortally graceful. He is empirically powerful. So consider Jesus the person. Consider the one who is powerful. Who in our passage says all authority in heaven and on earth is given to me. That's Jesus. All authority. Think about it. All in Greek literally means all. Authority in heaven and on earth. And I cannot think of another part of scripture that makes it so clear of the authority of Jesus. I turn to Colossians. In just six verses, one of the disciples of Jesus, a man named Paul, wrote these words. In six verses, he takes us from creation to consummation through the cross. And he says, this is who Jesus is. Now, I know you love participating. So every time I want you to hear, when you hear the word all, I want you to repeat after me. I want you to say all. Okay? Are you ready? Let's try it. All. All. That's it. Listen to this. He is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of all. all. That's a great way of keeping you awake, isn't it? <laughs> For by him, all, all, all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All, all, all things were created. <laughs> the cost of the house <laughs> no. all, all things were created through him and for him and he is before all, all things and in him all, all things hold together and he is the head of the body the church he is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead and in everything he might have supremacy for in him all, all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell and through him to reconcile to himself all, all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of this cross. Do you see it? The word all comes in on a regular basis there. He is describing who this Jesus is. He is the one who has authority over all. So tonight we trust in the person. We trust in the power of Jesus and indeed we trust in the person, in the presence of Jesus. I'm sure you've heard the story too of these two brothers. They were hooligans, absolute evil men. One of the brother dies very sadly. The other brother goes to the vicar of the church and he says, Vicar, I'll pay you any money you want, but in the funeral, in the eulogy, I want you to call him a saint. Just call him a saint. The vicar thought to himself, he said, I can't do that. I can't call this rascal a saint. But nevertheless, if I don't do it, he's going to give me a hard time. So he said, all right then, I'll do that. The day of the funeral and all the family and all the friends have gathered at the <coughs> church. The dead man is in the coffin. The vicar started the eulogy. He said, the man you see in the coffin, he was a hooligan, he was a liar, he was an adulterer, he did every conceivable evil act you could ever think of, but compared to his brother, he's a saint. <laughs> none of us, none of us stand before God, because we all, in every sense of the word, have dirty hands, and yet, the good news of the gospel, the good news of the gospel of Matthew is that Jesus is willing to come and stand alongside us. Did you hear the promise? The promise at the end of the Great Commission is this, I will be with you to the very end of the age. I will be with you. Andrea Tim, that is the promise of Jesus for us. 
We never walk alone. Oh, sorry, that's a little bit We never <laughs> go on our own. We are accompanied by the God of all creation. So, perhaps for the rest of us, it is not just a call on Tim's life. It is a call for every one of us. Because the person and the power and the presence of Jesus is for each one of us. We can experience the person, the power and the presence of Jesus. We can reach out to him. And tonight, wouldn't it be great for every one of us to reach out to Jesus and say, I am with you. Because God speaks to us. God speaks to us. He brings his presence to us through his word through the sacrament when we break the bread, through the reality of suffering, through the reality of pain. God speaks to us through creation. God speaks to us through other people. God speaks to us through sanctified common sense. God has so many incredible ways of speaking to us. However He speaks to you, He speaks to you uniquely. Say yes to Jesus as we walk with Him. Final thought, you know, go, it says in the commission. What is interesting to me is the word go in Greek is a present participle. What that really means is literally translated, that word says, as you go. As you go. The assumption is the disciple will go. So, friends, sisters, brothers, go. Go to schools. Go to universities, go to homes, go to neighborhoods, hospitals, prisons, council offices, universities, nurseries, homes for the elderly, Leicester Football Club, you have to, Tiger Stadium, and my favorite, Grace Road. Go to pubs, go to factories and farms and shops and libraries because there is not a square inch in, of all of creation where Christ does not say, that belongs to me. So disciples, go. May the Great Commission not be our great omission. May the Holy Spirit lead and guide us. Tim, before you receive this share in our pastoral charge, will you before God and this congregation reaffirm the promises you made when you were ordained and accepted the priesthood out of love for God, Jesus and the church? I will. At your ordination to the priesthood, you took authority to watch over and care for God's people, to absolve and bless them in his name, to proclaim the gospel of salvation, and to minister the sacraments of his new covenant. Will you continue as a faithful steward of the mysteries of God, preaching the gospel of Christ, and ministering his holy sacraments? By the help of God, I will. Tim has already taken uh, uh, the Declaration of Assent and has been licensed and the Oath of Allegiance was taken as well alongside the Oath of Canonical Obedience at Bishop's Lodge a few days ago. Okay. And Jenny is going to be praying. the gospel of salvation. Set him among your people 
to offer with them spiritual sacrifices acceptable in your sight, and to minister the sacraments of the new covenant. As you have called him to your service, make him worthy of your calling. Give him wisdom and discipline to work faithfully with all his fellow servants in Christ, that the world may come to know your glory and your love. Accept our prayers, most merciful Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit belong glory and honour, worship and praise, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jenny. I am Martin, by divine permission, Bishop of Leicester, to our brother in Christ, Timothy Robert Day, clerk in Holy Orders, greetings. We do hereby institute and admit you as vicar of the benefice of Topeka with Dishley within our diocese and to which you are presented by the Bishop of Leicester, the patron thereof, and we invest you with all rights and duties of the said benefice, saving to ourselves and our successors our episcopal rights. And we commit to you the care of souls in all of this benefice, so that by your ministry all may come to know in their lives the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and work together for the coming of God's kingdom. Tim, receive the cure of souls, the care of God's people, which is both mine and yours, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tim, may the love of the Father enfold you, the wisdom of the Son enlighten you, the fire of the Spirit <coughs> kindle you, and the blessing of the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Tim, as vicar, will you work in partnership with other members of the ministry team in the Spanish, exercising servant leadership and putting the needs of others before your own. By the help of God, I will. Are there others in the team who would want perhaps come and join around yourself, please? Those of you who are members of this ministry team, will you work with Tim as a colleague within this team, sharing in the leadership and oversight of these churches and working together to serve these communities. By the help of God, we will. And will you renew your commitment to work together to respond well to the three questions of mission and ministry in this diocese? How are you helping others grow in the depth of their discipleship? How are you growing the numbers of Christian disciples? And how are you loving and serving these communities and the wider world? By the help of God, we will do all in our power to grow in the depth of our discipleship, to grow the numbers of Christian disciples, and to grow in love and service of these communities and the wider world. May I invite everyone who is part of the parish, uh, people of God in this place, to please stand and affirm to you. May I ask you the question, people of God in this place, you are the body of Christ, and the body is only healthy when each part is working well with every other part. Will you share in the work of ministry and service, confident in your own gifts and unique contribution? and open to learning and receiving from others. By the help of God, we will. Archdeacon Claire, now that we have instituted Tim to the care of souls in the Spanish, we require and authorize you to conduct him into the possession of the church building and members. By virtue 
through the mandate of the Bishop of Leicester, I, Claire Wood, Archdeacon of Loughborough, do induct you, <coughs> Reverend Tim Day, into the real, actual, and proper <coughs> procession of the vicarage and parish church of All Saints, Fort Acre with Dishley, with all the rites, members, and appurtenances belonging thereunto. Lord, preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life in him. Receive this water and be among us in this ministry of transformation and rebirth, adding to our number those whom God is calling. We invite you all to join with us in making disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of our Son. We are sustained in our faith through Holy Communion. Receive this bread and wine, and be among us to proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. We invite you to join regularly with us in this sacrament to receive strength for daily living, that we can bear out into the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to God's praise and glory. Hold before us the story of God's love and mercy, the gospel of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Receive this Bible and be among us as preachers of the word of God and teachers of the faith. We invite you all to join with us in proclaiming the gospel of hope and new life. Nothing is achieved in our own strength, but only as God works through us. Receive this book and be among us as a person of prayer. We invite you all to join with us and with the whole church in the renewal of our common prayer and in the strengthening of the life and spirit of God. We ourselves are broken, and our world is broken. Receive this oil for anointing, and be among us as reconciler and healer. We invite you all to join with us in the ministry of reconciliation and healing, so that in the power of Christ we may bring wholeness to all God's people, and reach out to the world. Tim, let all these be signs of the ministry, which is both mine and yours, and shared by all the people of God. Amen. Amen. May we find joy together in the service of Grow as a faithful servant of his church. 
Amen. Here is your new minister, duly installed, globalistic, yes. green yes. and wonder. as area dean and on behalf of the deanery of Acre the East, I welcome you to this deanery and we look forward to sharing fellowship together at our monthly chapter meetings and the deanery synod three times a year, unless you're naughty, four times a year. <laughs> so a very warm welcome to you. During our next team, I'm going to invite our members of the community and our church representatives both in the deanery and ecumenical brothers and sisters to come forward and greet him. Tell him who you are and what you do. Keep it short. <laughs> um, part of welcoming Tim, of course, comes Andy. Andy, just stand up a minute with your mind as we welcome you. And Andy and Laura, Andy, do stand up. And Hannah, is that you? With Aidan, welcome. <laughs> As we've heard already, that Naomi and James are swanning around Mexico. Is it wonderful? Well, I hope they bring back some lovely gifts for you, and maybe some of us all present here as well. Thank you, do sit down. So without further ado, shall we, if we're able, stand to sing the uh, next two songs on our, our sheet up on the screen. Brother, sister, let me serve you, and God of glory. And those who are going to welcome him do come up during these hymns, please. Thank you.
Please do be seated as we pray. <coughs> Lord God, this evening we thank you for the communities to which we belong. We give you thanks for everyone who's here this evening, representing organisations in our community. We give you thanks for neighbours and for companions at work. Lord God, we do thank you for those who serve these communities, for our educators at schools, for our healthcare workers, for those who work for and serve us through our local councils. We thank you for our emergency services, for the dedication and professionalism of our hospitals, ambulance, police and fire services. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for the work of the church here in Full Paper Edition in this local community as we join with the other Christian communities in this place to reach out to those in our communities with your word. Lord, your name in Jesus is to bring good news to the poor to bring sight to the blind, freedom to the captives, and salvation to your people. Lord God, in power, anoint us with your spirit. Rouse us to work in his name. Father, we ask that you will continue to open our eyes to the work that needs to be done and the needs to be met amongst this community. Help us to work in partnership as we do. And guide us here at All Saints as we seek to use our resources and this building for that work. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, send us to a world in need. Lay on the hearts of every nation and every person the compassion and love to give aid to those whose needs almost beyond our imagination. Heighten our compassion as individuals and nations for people who don't have access to the food they need. We ask that you will bring through us the help they need to the many places in the world where the basics of human life are scarce. Lord, soften the hearts of the leaders in lands that deny their people's desperate plight. Bring wisdom to leaders where there is war and conflict. And Lord, we pray once again, and particularly for the people of the Ukraine and for Russia, for the aim, for the resolution to the tensions between China and Taiwan, for those seeking freedom and democracy in Myanmar, Lord, we bring before you Israel and Palestine. We pray for justice and equality. We pray, Lord, that you will show people how they need not fear each other. Lord, we pray earnestly that honest and open dialogue and understanding will replace mistrust and selfishness. Lord, in your mercy. In your name. Lord God, we pray that you will send and equip us to those who mourn, to bring joy and gladness instead of joy. <coughs> we pray for your comfort, for those who face illness and suffering. And Lord, we bring before you this evening those known to us who are suffering in body, in mind and in spirit. And at this time of all souls, we pray for those who have suffered bereavement recently or who are remembering the death of a loved one. Let me read quietly that Psalm 23, I invite you all to remember before God in the quietness of your own heart those known to us who are suffering. 
the Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in fields of green grass and leads me to quiet pools of fresh water. He gives me new strength. He guides me in the right paths as he has promised. Even if I go through the deepest darkness, I will not be afraid, Lord, for you are with me. Your shepherd's rod and staff protect me. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Yeah. Father, we pray and give you thanks for our diocese of Leicester. We give you thanks for the many different churches that serve Loughborough and our deanery and diocese. We give you thanks for the ecumenical partnerships that exist in this place for the Loughborough Church's partnership. Lord, help us to work in partnership for the good of your kingdom. And at this time of uncertainty, help us not to be fearful, but to continue the work you have set before us. Lord, we give you thanks and pray for Bishop Martin and Bishop Sadji as they lead us through the process of becoming Minster Communities. Show us, Lord, where we can work together for the sake of your kingdom. Eternal God, you call your people to fullness of life in you and promise to be with us in all the changing scenes of life. May we be shaped by you in our lives and communities to refresh the church, transform the world, and build the kingdom as with thanksgiving for the past, we step out in hope and trust into your future. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray in the language closest to our hearts. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, Folks, thank you so much for joining us this evening and for coming along to welcome Tim and Andrea and the family. Please do stay for refreshments in the church hall afterwards. You either go through that door or that door and walk in that direction. And hopefully you will see the cake and the tea and the coffee. Thank you so much to Bishop Sardew and Archdeacon Clare for your welcome and participation this evening. Thank you also to John and me for looking decorous at the front. And thank you also to the worship group and the home team for having made us all feel so welcome. During the last hymn, Tim will lead uh, the Archdeacon and Bishop to the door. As they get there and as we end the hymn, let's all turn and face the door and Tim will read us the Gospel reading and dismiss us. But before then, Bishop Sanji is going to impart God's blessing to us. Sure. Did you know this is uh, Andrew Ray's first service as an area dean? Can you believe it? <laughs> this guy was made for this. <laughs> let's pray. Almighty God who for the salvation of the world gives to his people many gifts and ministries to the advancement of his glory. Stir up in you the gifts of his grace and sustain each one of you in your own ministry 
and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. There is a Redeemer. <laughs> Serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. 